last night I uh, attended a very uh, pleasant uh, dinner hosted by my landlord the, in the home of, uh, above my flat and we were there quite late <laughs> and uh, I hadn't quite decided what I was going to talk about today <coughs> and so it occurred to me that I should talk about what what should you do when you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that is today's subject. It's really quite common in life that we find ourselves in a circumstance, sometimes small, sometimes big, and we just simply don't know what to do. Should I do this? Should I do that? Or I don't even have an idea about what I might try. And sometimes they're just little things. You know, what should I have for dinner? Let's see. Peas or potatoes? Peas and potatoes. You don't know. You've got to decide. And maybe it affects others. So you have to wonder, well, how will this affect others? Will my guests like peas or will they like potatoes? Well, that's doesn't seem too serious, but uh, sometimes people uh, have big decisions like, should I marry this person? <clears throat> That's a big decision. Uh, and uh, should I take this job or that job? There's an interesting story about uh, Senor Cuaron, who was the head of the uh, Mexico City uh, Meditation Center. Uh, when Master Yogananduji was still uh, in the body, and uh, he was fairly wealthy, but nevertheless he felt the need to work, and he had been offered a position. And of course, his the uh, uh, you know should I take the position? Should I not take the position? So it was a a, a good offer financially, and uh, but he wrote sent it in those days there was uh, telegrams. <laughs> That seems so long ago, doesn't it? <laughs> so, sent a telegram to Yoganandaji, Sir, I've been offered this position, should I take it? Well now, this is a good uh, uh, alternative when you don't know what to do, ask your guru. <laughs> if he's in the body, if your guru's not in the body, then a mentor. You go to someone, you know, for advice. And this is very good. Of course, this, this a mentor shouldn't just be an expert in maybe a field of interest, but uh, an expert in life. And if, if even better is an expert in the spirit, and then combining spirit and life. So uh, you wouldn't go into, uh, to an expert cook, generally speaking, if you wanted uh, a thoughts about what to do with you know rocket <laughs> engineering. But uh, you can't go to saints for pretty much anything. <laughs> well, so he uh, sent the telegram to Yogananaji. But in the meantime, he's thinking, well, you know, uh, Yogananaji is going to say yes. So uh, this is just a formality. But Yogananaji wrote back to him right away saying, no, you shouldn't take the job. Absolutely. Do not take the job. Well, Senor Cuaron was a, a faithful disciple. He followed his guru's advice. He didn't take the job. And uh, a short time later, he read in the paper that the people that had been hired to do the job were thrown into jail. The company uh, was found to be uh, fraudulent. So the guru saved him <laughs> from serious things. But he said, well, why wouldn't the guru want him to have a job? Well, he clearly he didn't want him to have that job. But also, Senor Quorum didn't really need a job. He, he wanted to live in a higher standard. He enjoyed the comforts of a, a higher standard of life. But as a devotee, he didn't really need that. So Master was kind of hinting. And this is a, another aspect of the spiritual life is Oftentimes, when we don't know what to do, we have a preference about what we want to do. Now, I'm not sure if I should do this, but this is really what I want to do. 
And we have to realize that our desires about things affects how things go and whether we should or shouldn't do it. Sometimes, uh, it's not always true, but sometimes if you really want to do it, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> you should be careful about that. Because as Yoganandraji taught, reason follows feeling. If you have a good feeling about it, you come up with reasons to do it. If that feeling is, I really want to do it, then we all know the justifications. But here's all the reasons why I did it. But the top reason, which you may or may not want to admit, was I wanted to do it. And I didn't really care if I shouldn't do it or not. So we have to realize that if we really want to know what to do, when we don't know what to do, we have to be detached. We can't insert our personal desires. That's not going to work. It's battery's low. So yeah. just leave it. Um, so when we insert our personal desires into <clears throat> that uh, circumstance, then we have to realize that we have affected the circumstance. And we have to be honest enough with ourselves to be able to say, oh, I am, <laughs> I am pointing the compass in the direction that I prefer, and that may or may not be the, the most beneficial direction to go in. So when we don't know what to do, we have to be a little bit detached. And that's hard when, uh, I remember when uh, my daughter uh, got very sick and we had to take her to the hospital. And it ends up that she had a burst appendix. And we had let it stay untreated for some time because she, we thought she just had a, a stomach flu. Other kids in the class had the stomach flu and we were like, and it was kind of my fault. Because when I took her to the doctor, I, I made a point of telling him that all of the other kids had the stomach flu. And so now suddenly, uh, uh, he said, well, okay, but let me take a blood test just in case. Well, when the blood test came back, she had a very high white uh, uh, cell count, and it was clear that she had some kind of internal infection. Took her to the hospital. The doctor ended up saying it was very serious. And, uh, okay, so now... We're at the hospital, my daughter's on the, in the operating room, and one of the nurses had said when we took her in, boy, I haven't seen anyone, anybody this sick in a long time. And we went, oh man, my daughter could die. My daughter could die in the operating room today. And now what do you do? Now, the most common thing that you, most people do is, You've got to save her. You've got to save her. Lord, you've got to save her. Isn't this the natural inclination? Is it my desire is the right desire? Because <laughs> my desire, my preference is, yeah, you've got to save her. But in that moment, I realized that I'm not in control of this situation. And what do I know about what would be best for her? Clearly, my self-interest is, hey, you got to stay. But the reality is that when, once you realize that life is eternal, it's so easy to think that our loved ones should stay here, when in fact you're, you, you might be doing them a favor by letting them go to some higher reality. I've mentioned this before, but remember the deer story in the autobiography of a yogi. And Yoganandaji prayed that the deer would live, and it lived. But then the deer came to him in a dream and said, let me go. It's, I need to move on. And it's this, the ego side says, I don't want to lose the pleasure of the company of my loved ones. But Yoganandaji said, well, if your loved one was going on vacation somewhere for an extended time, you wouldn't be bothered, would you? Well, what if... What if someone that you love is going on a super extended vacation to a higher realm? If we want to understand what to do when we don't know what to do, we have to follow one of the, 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 the most basic precepts in the spiritual life. And nobody said it better than Jesus. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. When we seek God first, when our relationship, our internal connection to spirit is first, then from there everything can proceed in a way that will be not always what we would prefer, but that which is most beneficial. Senor Cuaron preferred to take the job. Big mistake. God saved. I preferred that my daughter live. Good news, she did. <laughs> I'm glad, I, I'm glad I, I remembered to tell you that. But the, the thing is that if we let our preferences get in the way, then we may, in, with, with what we would describe to ourselves, good intentions, get ourselves unnecessarily into trouble. Now, sometimes when we don't know what to do, it's not such a big deal. Well, let me, let me, go, back to, let me, let me go back to one other story about big deals in life. So, there's a woman who uh, uh, got married in, uh, by one of the ministers at Ananda. This is back in, in the 70s. And on the honeymoon, her husband died, or got a heart attack. And on the honeymoon, oh, and by the way, she is visually impaired. She's blind. So you know she's already, life is challenging. So <laughs> I mean, it's hard to imagine. Husband has a heart attack on the honeymoon end up in the hospital. Uh, okay, you start the prayers. Lord, save him. Save him, save him, save him. Keep him here. Keep him here, keep him here, keep him here. Well, interestingly enough, the prayers worked. He was staying, he was staying, he was staying. And then after about a week or ten days of in intensive care, he seemed to, to stabilize. So they thought, we're going to take a day off going to take a day off, recoup, because they were exhausted. The day they took off, he passed. Now, we all know that their prayers were keeping him in the body. There's just no question that as soon as they let up, he, he, he felt free to go. If we try to impose our view when we don't know what to do, then we may not be helping ourselves and others. It's, it's something that we're not trained to think about this way because we're trained to go with our emotions. We're trained to go with those things which society says we should do rather than higher truth, which we can't always see clearly. Only when we are connected in spirit can we, can we begin to <coughs> recognize more clearly the truth of what's happening in life, but most importantly, even when we don't understand it, to harmonize with it in the best possible way. And this is a more common experience, not that you intuitively know, oh yes, I should do this or that, but you you become aligned with the synchronicity of your life and somehow things flow in the right direction. So uh, I had an incredible example of this myself once. Uh, back in the, in the 90s, uh, I traveled, uh, I wanted to travel to uh, Vancouver, BC, British Columbia, to have that LASIK surgery done in my eyes. Uh, because at that time it was cheaper to go there uh, than it was to do it in the, U the U.S. It was in the fairly early years of that that procedure had been done. So, but as it ended up, it was less expensive to fly to Seattle, rent a car, drive the car to Vancouver, than to fly directly to Vancouver. Why that would be, uh, I, I don't know. But I thought, well, let me go to Seattle, rent the car, and I had never been to the Seattle Center. Uh, it was in the, you know, the earlier years. 
the first uh, temple that they had, not the nice big one they have now. And so I'd never been there, so I th and my flight was like at midnight. I arrived in Seattle at midnight. So I'm thinking, look, if I go to a hotel, then uh, I'm really not going to sleep that much. Why don't I just drive to the center, sleep in the car, I'll get up and freshen up and I'll go to Sunday service. Seemed like a good idea to me. So uh, what had not occurred to me was that I had no idea where the center was. <laughs> Seattle's a big town and the, the airport is south of town by the ways. So I, I get in the car and I start driving north towards Seattle. I have no idea where the center is. Zero. I mean, I just didn't know. I had made no preparation for how to find a place. So, of course, I begin to use my common sense. My, I use my brain and go, well, how can, how can I find out where it is? Well, in America, uh, th this, I don't know if this ever happened in India much. Um, in those days, we used, actually used the phone book. And in the phone book, most businesses would be listed. And so, if you could just find a public phone, you could find a phone book, look it up. Uh, so oftentimes, if you go to a gas station, uh, they'll have a map or maps and a phone and a person that you can talk to and maybe they know. <laughs> I don't know. So I thought, I started looking for gas stations. You know, well, where can I, you know, uh, I'll get off, I'll, you know, get a map, I'll talk to someone, get the phone. Well, then the strangest thing happened is that I couldn't find any gas stations of petrol, for those unfamiliar. So I'm driving north for kind of a long time. And I'm thinking, you know, I could just be like completely going by it. I mean, it might be on the south side of town. I'm going north. I have no idea where it is. And I can't find a gas station, which is very strange because usually they're right next to the freeway. And, you know, you just pull off, you see it. So, of course, I started fairly early in the process. I started with, so what? What are we doing? <laughs> Where are we going to go? How are we going to find this place? Lord, what am I, you know, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> and uh, so, I'm, but I'm not getting any, like, turn left, <laughs> then go one mile and turn right. No, nothing like that. So, I'm driving, I'm driving, I'm driving. Finally, I see a petrol station. But there's no off-ramp. So I have to go to the next off-ramp and then turn right and then come back on the parallel street to get to the gas station. So I'm coming down this parallel street and it's kind of a little commercial area with little shops, storefronts side by side. And of course the, the lights are on at night. And it's, you know, now it's like 1.30 in the morning. And I'm, I'm looking around like this, where, you know, uh, going to the gas station. But I'm, I'm looking around, and next thing I know, I look up, I see a sign on the right-hand side. It says, a non dissenter. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> How can you explain that? Uh, what are the chances of that happening? It's like it's not even possible. It's not even possible that that could happen. All I can say is it happened. Korean Andriji often told the story about the time when he he came to India and he was at the airport and the person who uh, was supposed to pick him up was delayed. So now he's just arrived on an international flight. He doesn't know where to go. He's just totally like alone what to do. And of course, what should you do when you don't know what to do? Don't get excited. Get calm. Be at peace. And so right away he went, oh, okay Lord, Divine Mother, what are we going to, you know, what's up? What are we doing? And just a, a few minutes later, somebody walked up to him and said, uh, are you Swami Kriyanand? And he said, yes. He so I, I thought I recognized you. I'm a friend of so-and-so. I'm here in, in uh, Calcutta to see him. And Kriyananda says, oh, 
I've been wondering where he is. I've been wandering, wanting to find him, but I didn't have any contact information. So, so well, I can take you there. So not only did, did Divine Mother give him a ride, but it, Divine Mother gave him a ride to the place that he wanted to go, which he had never verbalized to anyone at any time. Synchronicity. This sense that the more we live with the thought of God, the more that we live in that inner relationship and participate with it, then life responds accordingly. If we live with agitation, then I don't know what to do. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I don't know what to do. When you live in calmness, oh, be at peace. And in that peace, you know, Yoganandaji said something that's very interesting. He said, one time when he was at, uh, uh, he was being interviewed by a journalist and, who was reviewing his uh, book, Whispers from Eternity. And uh, the journalist said to him, sir, uh, can inspiration, creativity be under the control of the will? And Yoganandra Jesus said, yes, absolutely, take down this poem. And he wrote a beautiful, just came out a beautiful poem. Later, when uh, another journalist was reviewing Whispers from Eternity, uh, he said, and I have to quote a particularly good poem, and the, that was the one he quoted. So it wasn't just like an average creative expression, it was a beautiful one. So here we have, at one point I'm saying you should attune yourself to God, you should give up your desires. And then Yogananda is saying you can come up with fresh and new ideas by the control of your will. These things go side by side because when you live in your connection to spirit, then you become a channel for spirit. But the way to be a channel for spirit is to attune yourself to God's will, not, not the ego will, but the higher self will. And when we practice doing that, what we find is that our ideas become in harmony with, with that which is best for us. It could be a positive expression, but it, it could also be the decision about what to have for dinner. You might make a, a dish at home one night which you haven't made in a long time, and you're not even sure why you made it that night, and then a guest will come in and that's their favorite dish. And you're like, how did that happen? But on a very practical level, when you attune yourself to spirit, somehow, according to your nature, the way that you approach life, you'll somehow become harmonized with the accomplishment of those things that are yours to accomplish. So uh, I, bought, I bought myself a new used treadmill. I need to get into shape. Okay, but it came with wires that didn't have plugs on the end. So now I need an electrician. So I went to the, the, the fellow who keeps the house and I said, I need an electrician, but my Hindi and his Hindi, they weren't, uh, they weren't fitting together quite properly. And so I somehow, you know, I understood he was saying call tomorrow, but I knew that, that tomorrow was likely going to become many days tomorrow and not necessarily the accomplishment of my goal, which was to get this thing connected to the wall. So, I waited till the next day when nothing happened in the late morning, I decided I'm going to take things into my own hands. What does that mean? Lord, what are we going to do? <laughs> well, I got on my little two-wheeler and I went driving. And I had seen a row of, of shops, of uh, uh, kind of service businesses, uh, uh, not very far uh, from, from my flat. So, I drove over there and I started looking around. And I just, I looked, and I drove, I got in front, there was two shops. One of them 
one was like super busy. The other one didn't look so busy and also the door was closed. That means they had AC inside. I'm going to go in there. Ten minutes later, I had the electrician on the back of my bike and we were going over to the flat. It got taken care of very quickly. What should I do? You have to do something. You can't just sit passively on your, ch your chair and expect the world to come to you. Now, it could happen. There's a fun story that uh, I suppose Yoganandaji told this story, but Kriyanandaji told it many times over the years. So, people from different countries were given the same project, which was to uh, write an essay on the elephant. So, the, how many know this story? So, I'll tell it anyway. But there's some that don't. So, uh, the American wrote an essay on how to make a bigger and better elephant. And, uh, uh, well, and, and, and he hired a plane and went and looked at elephants in, in Africa to do it. Uh, the British guy went to the library. So, he, uh, um, he went to the library and studied a lot of books. And then he wrote on the aristocratic nature of the elephant. And of course, the German, the German wrote on the war-making uh, capacity of the elephant. And of course, the Frenchman wrote on the love-making of the elephants. But the Indian, the Indian just went into the closet, sat down in meditation, and an essay on the elephants manifested in his hands. And this is, this could happen. But as a practical matter, most of us are not that capable of manifesting our, our dharma in life. The things that we need to do, the decisions that we need to make. So, we need to activate that process according to the realities of where we're at. If when we pray, we get instant inspiration, good. If we don't, then we have to use logical steps, common sense, until, you know, it's called, uh, you know, when you have a water well, when you first try to turn it on, it doesn't work. You have to prime it. You have to get a little bit of water in it, get it lubricated, and then it, the energy. So when the energy is stuck in life, you have to add energy to activate the process. So that process can be activated by prayer, by communion. But if that by itself isn't sufficient, then you have to activate it by creative ideas. You have to come up with the best, your best guess and then proceed carefully. Don't assume that your first inspiration is the only and best inspiration. And over time, when you practice this, you begin to recognize when it feels right. You begin to recognize the ways that God will guide you you in your individual relationship with God, how God will guide you to the right things. And then you'll find that in amazing ways, life does work out. And new ideas will come to you. And when you practice this and you uh, 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 get yourself into situations where I don't know what to do, I've got to figure out what to do, and you get through them consciously with this inner connection to spirit, and you do that, you experience it over a period of time, you begin to have faith in it. You begin to trust it. But that doesn't mean that you make assumptions about it or presumptions. You don't presume that, you know, that God is going to do it the way you want to do it because you've got to remember, God is ever new. God likes to mix it up. God doesn't want to do it cookie cutter style every time you have a question and this is how the answer comes. God wants to have a good time. A little bit of a mystery, a little bit of a game. A little bit of a, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Because that makes life much more interesting. So when you feel this, when you feel this, I don't know what to do. Remember, the first thing you always do, be connected inside. Give your life to God. Open yourself up to God's presence in your life. Practice this regularly, and when you do, you'll become more and more comfortable with it. 
And you'll begin to see the ways that God responds to you and your prayers. Remember to stay detached. Even when things go well, stay detached. Because it's inevitable that life will have ups and downs. My daughter was in the hospital. She almost died. And in the end, I, I would have to say it was partially my fault. Because I presumed that I could diagnose her condition by limited information. And even the doctor felt really bad because he didn't, because I was such a strong uh, promoter of my point of view, he didn't do what he would normally do as, as strongly. He could have gotten into trouble. He felt really bad about it, not, you know, being swayed. So, if, how many people have, in, in, with good intention, imposed very wrong opinions on other people? It happens all the time. All the time. So we have to be careful that we don't unintentionally act according to our smaller view. We always want to be connected to God's larger view. And we have to stay detached. Recognize that God knows what's going on and God knows what to do about it. We just have to catch up. We just have to figure it out. Be connected to it. So this is a very different point of view than the worldly person whose main goal in life is to have their own personal preferences fulfilled. So if your daughter needs a job, your son needs a job, your, you know, some loved one is having a problem, don't presume that the society's general point of view is the right point of view. Look at the situation as an individual unique circumstance. Yes, you can, uh, common sense that it says that you would refer to the guidelines, refer to common knowledge. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you want to you know, do something. But at the same time, don't assume that there isn't some unexpected new creative possibility. How many parents have, have kept their children from pursuing creative careers that ended up being successful, but the parent never wanted that to happen, and they actually tried to keep it from happening? That's quite common. And you know, you've got uh, young people who get finished university and they already have chosen to go to engineering or to medical or to, uh, you know, but they don't know what they want to do. I know a fellow uh, at Ananda who uh, went to law school, took the bar exam, became uh, uh, legal for him to become an attorney, but he never practiced. By the time he, had, he, he started, he wanted to finish, but at some point he realized that he wasn't interested. <laughs> How many people have the guts to do that? That's a big, you know, especially here in India, if, if your family has really invested. Well, families in America invest heavily in the education of their children as well. So, when you don't know what to do, connect. And that's always what to do. Connect inside. Invite God to participate in your life. And then, you know how we do the healing prayers. You rub your hands together, you chant Om, the energy flows through the hands, out the spiritual eye, and you shine that light as a channel on the situation. So when you have a situation in your life, Om, be a channel. Don't send your desire, send God's light. The light knows what to do. That healing presence, that guiding presence, it's intelligent, it knows what to do. So if your loved one is in the hospital, boom, let the light flow, let the light decide how to manifest uh, uh, the way things proceed. Trust, trust that divine flow. It will take things where they need to go. So often in life, we look back, and it's only when we look back we realize that that disaster was the best thing that could have happened to us. 
when at the time we thought, this is crazy, this is terrible. So when, when the church in Encinitas Hermitage uh, uh, fell into the ocean, Yogananda said, oh, this is the best thing that could have happened. We started two new churches. We reached so many more people, which we wouldn't have done if the temple hadn't fallen off into the ocean. How come he didn't know? He was one with God. How come he didn't? Why did he build a temple where it was going to fall down? And why did he act like he was surprised it fell? We shouldn't think that we are somehow less connected to God because we don't know what to do all the time. When the masters come into this world, as human beings, they don't know what to do all the time. But as avatars, they can find out any time they want. We have to learn how to find out. That is the key. Learning how to find out what to do when we don't know what to do. This is the solution. When you do that, then the details of each particular situation, if you need a new idea, it comes to you. If, if you need a, an opportunity, syn synchronicity happens. I was looking for a job one time, I look here, 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 and here, no job. Then I got a phone call, somebody offered me a job. I didn't put any energy out into the direction that it came back to me, but I put that energy out over here. It climbed the pump. I was cooperating with energy flow. And this works, but the only way that we can experience it working is to practice it. So experiment with this in your own life. When you don't know what, well, you should do it even when you know what to do, do this. But especially when you don't know what to do, use this inner connection to spirit in order to work with the ideas that we've been talking about. And see if God, how God, I should say it this way, see how God, God does participate in your life. When we experience God's conscious participation in, in our lives, we realize one of the greatest reliefs in life, I'm never going to be abandoned. I'm never going to be alone. God is always going to be with me. God is always going to take care of me. God will always guide me to the things that are right for me. That's, that, that's way better than the insurance policy that you pay before monthly. This is the only true insurance, is your relationship to God. Namaste. I just want to add, I remember Master's uh, affirmation, uh, I will reason, I will will, I will act, but Lord, guide my reason, guide my will, and guide my action. Yes. So, will it be a prophet here in this situation? Yes, all the time. I will, I will reason, I will will, I will act. But guide thou my reason, will, and activity. This is, this is the proper way to see it.